Hi, I'm Damian Lash with Parallel North from Lake Charlotte Boy News. I got Conrad on today. We're going to talk about the upcoming fight in East Jordan at the Civic Center on December the 5th. Conrad, thanks for coming on the show, man. Glad thanks to have you back. Well, the last time you were on here, we were talking about this program. You coming back and, and doing the, your is this your last fight? Last mixed martial arts fight. I'm going to switch over to kickboxing next year. Okay. So, so kickboxing. Yeah. The plan... I've been doing MMA for seven years now, and my plan is to take a couple amateur kickboxing matches and then take a one-and-done pro kickboxing match next year, because after putting seven years into the martial arts, it seems kind of silly to quit without at least going pro. You okay. Just do it once. So. Okay, so go pro at least once, huh? Yeah. Now, where do you do that at? Where are you going to go pro at? Um, there's a few shows that I've seen doing some pro kickboxing matches here and there, so... Um, Maybe I'll get a hold of uh, Berserker up in uh, the UP. Maybe I can get something going through AFL or something. Okay, we'll okay. See what's going on? Now with that, now is the kickboxing the whole venue, or is it like a feature fight like what you guys have once in a while? Like you know, this will be a kickboxing contest or about. It'll probably be just a you know featured fight. Okay, thing. okay, all right, all right. I was wondering if there was like a uh, kickboxing league or something like that. Are there different functions of leagues? Yeah, there is. And okay. I, I know there's some kickboxing leagues, I just don't know any personally. I know some of the bigger ones, you know, Glory, you know, like the UFC of kickboxing, but I don't sure. like smaller pro promotions to go Okay, with. I see, okay. Well, give me a little rundown of what's going down. I mean, I had Matt G on, I had, uh, you know, the, the, the crew over here, they were talking a little bit about it back and forth, and, and um, really pumping up the fight. It sounds good. I mean, I know the last couple I've been to, they've had some good showings. You got a lot of tickets left? Oh, yeah. I got. I printed off some extra ones this time. Nice. Um, I turned the balcony into cage side seating as well, so $35 will get you either on the floor or the balcony. You don't have to price difference. So I've got, you know, VIP seating, and then the general admissions is the bleacher seating. Okay. So there's the difference in the colors here. Okay. Yeah. There they are. Cool. I like it. I like the little guy on there. Right. That's uh, cool. The little uh, copy shop in town does this for me, so that's pretty cool of them. Nice. And they, that's uh, right there in East Jordan also? Yep, right next to Nico's. Okay. That's cool. So, um, how long have you been in this? So, when you were on the program last time, you were talking about this coming up fight. Is he, so, you the same guy in fighting? Yep. He, uh, Aaron Ames from Flint, he's coming up. He asked me my first East Jordan show if I'd fight him in my hometown. So I haven't fought in over a year. I plan to be done, but I figure if I fight in my hometown, that's going to sell some tickets. Plus, you know, my last fight was supposed to be at 185. I was fighting a 2 0 guy at the time, and he had to pull out last minute. I ended up jumping up a weight class to 205 to fight a 6 and 1 guy and lost that fight. Okay. So I figure this one, at least I know what I'm getting into before, you know, six hours before the show. Okay. So, so what are you wait? What are you fighting at now? Fighting at heavyweight. Um, that's 206 to 265. I'm walking around at about 210. Okay, so we got a guy on the program here. Everybody seems like they're south of 150. Yeah. You know, all the time. Is that now? Is that the predominant weight? Yeah. 150 and under. 155 is probably the most stacked weight class in the division. Um, 155, 145, those are two of the bigger classes. I've got like 40 or 50 fighters that have fought under me at those classes. Okay. So you guys have been training for what, about eight months, nine months now? Oh yeah. I've, uh, I've been doing some hardcore training. I mean, watching Jet Li films and Power Rangers. <laughs> I love it. So, but I, for real though, I have gone. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I went down to Grayling got some sparring in with a uh, pro fighter and world karate champion Zach Burns. I'm going down there again Friday. Oh, okay. With him. Cool. So, so you're really turning it up now, I take it. Yeah. I mean, there's only so much I can do. I work seven nights a week, uh, 60 hours a week. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, That's what a lot of people don't realize. Is you guys are fitting this in your spare time. You know, it's this glorified hobby at best, you yeah. know, and some people take it more serious than others. You know, some guys dedicate their whole, you know, like a rock star. They don't do nothing. Yeah, that's my goal for next year. Like, after this fight, I'm going back to 170 for kickboxing. I'm going to start training at uh, Warrior Combat Academy. Um, they're in Manton right now. I hear they're moving to Traverse City, which is cool. Okay. Um, I'll be working over with...
was Zach Burns still getting some sparring in with the world karate champ? Just because, you know, if you're going to start working with kicks, who better to work with than the best in the world? Oh, yeah, I would have to say that you want to work with somebody who's been, you know, been in the comp, been in the spot, experienced, and that's like their forte of doing it, you know. For sure. I mean, not just dabbling, I'm going to try it this month or, or whatever. I mean, he's got a pro fight coming up November 21st in Lansing, too, Zach Burns. Okay. So I'll be down there checking him out, you know. Oh, that's cool. Thing. You're going to be like me down, just down there as a spectator in the corner? Yeah. Or? Yep, just coming down to watch. Got a ticket, got a hotel room. I've nice. got like 11 guys I sponsor on that card. So oh, there. that's cool. So that'd be probably a pretty fun night, huh? Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> an amazing card, too. That's so. cool. Any big names on it besides for Burns? or? Um, We got Daquan Townsend. He's fighting, defending his 170 belt. He's a monster. You'll see him in the UFC someday. Okay. Um, Vince Murdoch, I believe, is fighting for his 135 belt. Um, all these guys I sponsored, Josh Parisian, Taylor Moore, um, God, there's so many, Marcus Malding. Right, I mean, you probably can't get them all in, yeah. but, you know, those Sorry we, if I forgot you, right. you know, I still love you guys. <laughs> right, we, we, we don't script it here, we go live, we're raw. Yeah, oh. took notes, not about the pros, sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you got on the notes? Uh, first off, I want to give a shout out to all the sponsors for December 5th. We got Simple Auto. Uh, Jacobson Cleaning, Partly Cloudy Design, Little Keys Photography, Cello Salon, The Zone Sports Lounge, that's the official after party, it's right next to the venue, like one block over. Uh, Nico's Pizza, they're doing the catering again, they're bringing all the pizza and soda. Subway, Nice Jordan, ACSLive.tv, and Every Victory Earned Clothing. I also want to just thank my personal sponsor, not for the show, but for my fight, uh, Chell Back Boxing. And then I got a bunch of fights here to go over. So um, first off, the first one I want to talk about is two O and O guys, local guys, both just out of high school. Um, and I believe Xavier Settlemeyer is going to beat Dakota Riddle's ass. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, well, what, 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 what round? What round? I'd say second. Second. Okay. All right. I, I, we're gonna get a little predictions and we'll see how it is on 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 the on the night. I'm, I'm gonna say second round TKO. Okay. Um, we got Jeremiah Fuller and Rob Goodrich, two big guys. I'm thinking this is going to be a knockout in the first round. I can't say either way which one, but both of these guys are big, heavy swingers. Okay, so somebody's going to get hit, and they're going to get knocked out. Yeah. <laughs> Unless they got a better chin, but they both sound like, you know, I've got people messaging me saying that this isn't a good fight. This guy's going to get a knockout in the first round. And i got people messaging me, this isn't a fight. This guy's going to get a knockout. In the first round. <laughs> yeah. like, so that's both going to get a knockout in the first round. Well, maybe, 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 they'll actually, maybe they'll hit each other at the same time and both be knocked out. Oh, that happened up in uh, Sault Ste. Marie. Um, another guy I sponsored, Jay Jackson, he's fighting... This weekend in uh, Indiana, I believe, him and Owen Martin, same time, hit each other. One fell, <laughs> and the ref stopped the fight. The other one takes a couple steps back and falls over. Okay, so the, so, so the last guy falling is the winner, right? Yeah. Okay, I like that. That makes sense. Go on. What's up? Uh, we got a 145 title tournament. We got four guys. The first two fights of the night, and then... Uh, the winner of those two are going to fight for the belt later in the night. Well, oh, so we're going to have some Iron Man fighting. Oh, yeah. You're going to fight once and then gear up or stay geared up, get revved up and do it again. Yep, you're going to give them like you know, a show to catch their breath and then they'll be fighting for the belt later on that night. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Um, as far as locals, you know, we got Austin Melios back on the card, yeah. Tyson Potter on the card, I'm on the card fighting Aaron. Yeah. Let me a little run on Tyson, you know. I, I see the guy is a good, great guy. I've talked to him a few times. My, my, my friend Brenda does some of my photography with me. She, she knows the guy. He seems to be a great, nice, is he pretty cool? I mean, he seems like a nice guy. He's the nicest guy you'll meet and the most non-violent guy you'll meet. But he likes to fight. Okay, well, hey, I mean, <laughs> you get riled up. I mean, just because you're excited. Yeah, he's, he's some, I actually talked to him about the last one. You know, he's been eating some shots and taking some, coming out of the fight looking pretty damaged. And I'm like, dude, do you, you know, I don't know if you want to do this anymore. I don't want you to feel like you have to because I'm doing it. Do you want to be done? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> he, he weathers it. I mean, you know, they go in there, they get in a fight. I like seeing the big guys go at it. They really do seem to beat each other up. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, you know, which, uh, which I, you know, I have to say we show up at the fight. We want to see some fighting. They seem to do that. Uh, I got him on a couple of the films. He seems to do it. He's wrap it up pretty quick, too. Yeah. He, Who else you got on there? Um, two 
big names for 185er, at least in the area. Chris Cameron and Troy Wilson, both of them have been out for a while, but both of them are ridiculously talented fighters. Okay. Um, obviously, Brad Turnbull was on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's facing off with Nate Davis. Give me a little rundown on that particular match. Now, that's like a, he said that's a feature. Yeah, it's, it's going to be the first title fight of the night. First title fight of the night. So, now, is that a real title? Or is that an interim? interim? It's, um, How do they say that? Interim. Interim, okay. So... It's gonna be a super fight title, which basically you either do when uh, you know you got two guys that are really good and you want to get them on the card against each other, and you know you can't really give them the shot at the champion because neither of them are the champion. Or for these guys, both of them are really good, but they're not at the level of the champion yet. Okay. Okay. And I feel like either of them could have a belt. Just I don't think they're ready for the belt. So this is a great way to decide which of the two. Needs we'll go. to go to the next level. Yes. Okay, great. Great. That I like being that. said, too, um, we're, for the 125 champion, the champ right now is Lex Marson. He was out for a year, so we did an interim title. And um, Matthew Elliott won that. Matthew Elliott is teammates with Nate. So if he was to win, I wouldn't want him to fight a dance's teammate, which he wouldn't anyway. Now, what, let me so, ask you about that. You know, it seems like this is one of the things that I always had a little bit of a hard time with, and this might be just around, you know, a little bit ignorant in this. You know, this is an individual sport. I could never figure out the team concept. I mean, I get that you guys fight in different weights, but it seems like, you know, a win's a win, and, a, and an opportunity to, to, to fight and get better would be an opportunity to, to do so. So it's like, I almost find out, you know, what are if you, maybe I'm maybe I'm being a little over the top here, but why would you not fight your teammate? Your team ends up like your family. You know, you spend so much time. You got any family. brothers or sisters? I've got ridiculous amounts of brothers. So you spend a few fights. A little bit here. Okay, all right, okay, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> but um, you know, you spend so much time with them, working on getting them better, getting you better, and all you really want to do is see your teammates succeed. But but that's where I come back to. This is supposed to be about competition, not brutality. Yeah. So why would you not want to go in there and see who the best is? Because you see it every day in the gym. Then therefore I would say that it would be a, a guy with the gold is the best, right? In the business? Yep. Okay. Okay, I'm just you're not trying to get a fight going between people. But I would think that I would be relishing the opportunity to, to hone my skills and to kind of create a pecking order with inside of, of the, the, the family. Right. I mean, obviously, you know, a, a good big guy should always beat a good little guy, right? In theory. Yeah, as long as they're both, um, you know, same level as far as Skill. knowledge and everything. Yeah. Because, you know, a good ju as Hoist Gracie showed, a good jujitsu guy will beat a bigger guy that doesn't know what jujitsu is. Sure, and skill. Thing. And technique. But if they're both, you know, same skill wise, I would say yeah, the heavier guy okay. would have the advantage. Well, I see then. But I just say that being as a promoter, you know, your your job is to get the best fight possible for ticket sales and for the audience. And mm -hmm. you know, my my thing is as a spectator and a little bit of promoter myself, I would think that it would be an opportunity to say, hey guys, you know, yeah, I know it's inside the family, but you know, you got a chance at the belt, you got a chance at furthering your career. Because at the end of the day, isn't everybody training to get to the next level in this? For the most part, I mean, okay. uh, there are some like me that are just doing it as a hobby, but for yet, yeah, people that actually train hard are trying to go somewhere with it. Okay, so. All right. But, you know. So spin that around. 125? Um, 125ers. He's going to fight for the title. The guy has the gold. He's been out for a year, he said. Yeah. And so now, what's up with that gold? Or um, that belt? I'm going to have them meet up later. Okay. Um, Matthew Elliott is going to fight Lex Marson down the line to unify the belts. Oh, know. okay, okay. But for now, you know, Lex has been out for a while. He was supposed to make his return last weekend in a showdown state and didn't have an opponent. What's um, up with that? I hear that a lot. I mean, how could, why do people back out? I mean, what are they, nerves? Nerves. Um, some have injuries. Some have family issues. I had a guy that had to pull out because his mom was going into a uh, heart surgery. Um, there are some that come up with some crazy excuses. I had a guy that was fighting in like November or something, November, October, that hits us up and says, hey, my company has their uh, 
Christmas party this weekend. I can't make it. I'm like, dude, Christmas is a month away, and you didn't know until this week that the Christmas So what about a Christmas party? You're a fighter. Yeah. You train. <laughs> Show up at the fight. Do your thing, man. Okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. I just noticed that Matt G seems to have a lot of backouts. Yeah, and that's the weird thing, too. Like, no offense to Matt, but being an 0-3, I would love to fight him. I don't know why people are like... <laughs> right? Like, no offense at all. No, right, I get it. His rec- this, on the record alone, you want to get in there and, breathe, yeah. and breathe, beat him up. There's nobody that's got a negative record that I'm not going to be like, yeah, sure, I'm in. You know? <laughs> right? I've got that's a negative record myself, but... You know, you go for what you can, you know? And that's what I'm, and that goes back to what I'm saying. You know, every fight should be taken as, you know, a legitimate chance to get better, you know, respect your opponent, go and win, you know, if, if somebody gets hurt, you get hurt. Right. You know, I mean, that's why you protect yourself, or try to win. Agreed. Um, keep going on the things. We got our heavyweight champion, Andrew Fernelius, who won the belt with a head kick knockout on Tyson. Um, he's going to unify with our super heavyweight champion Donnie Hancock who's got I think he's nine and three with I want to say roughly seven first round knockouts wow so and what's the weight on these guys said heavyweight super heavyweight is what 12 250 up 265 and up 265 and up which is weird because our uh, super heavyweight champion has lost weight so he's about 260, so he's a heavyweight, where our heavyweight champion is walking around at about 280, so he's a super heavyweight. <laughs> so that's why we decided, you know, you guys can just fight each other and we'll call it one right, belt for right. now. When do, you, when, do you, when do you call it good? Like, it's 220, it seems like anybody over 225 pounds in shape should be able to to, to, to play the game anywhere. Yeah. I mean, you know, in, in the big boy level. Oh, yeah. You, you see a lot of these heavier guys aren't heavy because they're in shape. No, I, I gotta say, I'm surprised, I will admit that I would, could see a lot of, I mean, it seemed like a lot of guys would want to be in better shape. Yeah. And, you know, there are some that, you know, are 265 and in shape. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the ones at the amateur level you see at mm-hmm. 265 are because... Yeah, when I, when I was at 225, man, I was, I was shredded up. Right. I mean, yeah, I was... People were like, well, you've been massive, man. Like, right. yeah, you know. <laughs> So I was surprised when you see guys walking in, you know, they're 250, it looks like they could lose about 50 pounds. For sure. You know, and that's like, you know, it seemed like they'd be better athlete at a lower weight. Yeah, that's me too. Like, I'm walking at 210 right now, fighting at heavyweight, but I've also fought at 155. Yeah. So, you know, 170, 185 is where most of my fights are, that's where I want to get back down to. Okay. But, you know, right, like right. I said, I'm training by watching Ninja Turtles. Right, yeah, and Ninja Turtles <laughs> is a great program, I mean... I learned all kinds of cool kicks and stuff. I can't wait to see your style. You'll see some ninja shit, I promise that. Crouching turtle power ranger, whatever. Working on my defense with my pit bull, so that way if I get taken down, I can And he's low, off. right? He's yeah. low? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, so I heard, any, 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 give me run out of how many females? Uh, we got a debuting female? We've got two female matchups. One is a youth kickboxing match. The other one is a title fight. So we got Lizzie Crowley, who won our 125 belt um, in West Branch, having her first title defense. I'm waiting to hear back from a coach right now. He told me that he had somebody, and then it's been a week, and he hasn't told me who yet. So i got to get with him and be like, hey, if you have someone, I need to know who it is. Now, is that sort of part of the strategy, is not to tell people who they're fighting? or I mean, Well, that's the thing. Like, If he doesn't have somebody, Lizzie has to cut weight to make 125. Um, I don't have an opponent for her at the moment. Just because he said I have someone doesn't mean I have someone. Is there a middle ground? I mean, so, did she cut a little bit of weight or not? Not for the belt. Not for the belt. She's got okay. to be All right. Within okay. two pound allowance, so one twenty seven. When do you have a cutoff? I mean, just we're kind of, I mean, we're only like what three weeks away. Yeah. Right? So I'm gonna hit him up this week, and if he doesn't have a name, then I'm gonna start looking for someone else because okay. you know okay. time's running out. Right. Um, the other one is a youth kickboxing match. Uh, Angel Shower making her kickboxing, you know, cage debut. Um, her original opponent had to drop out for a personal reason. And uh, I was looking around to find somebody else, and she decided that she would be willing to fight a very skilled uh, youth in Tiffany Cheerney, who is today or tomorrow competing for her second time in the Karate World Champions. She took three first place medals last year, 
in Dublin, Ireland. She's in uh, Orlando, Florida right now competing tonight or tomorrow. What a great story. I'd love to have her on the program. I, I've seen she's the one that always is there doing doing this stuff. You know, a great athlete. Yeah. I mean, 12 years old, 13 years old. Fluid-like. I mean, real cool. I could see her earning some gold. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, her uh, and Angel's original opponent is the one that Tiffany kickboxed in East Jordan and beat in the first round. Okay. And uh, I was trying to find someone to replace her. And Angel hits me up yesterday, I believe, maybe the day before. She's like, I'll kickbox Tiffany. I'm like, Are you, do you want to do just like an exhibition where you guys go in the cage and do some sparring? You know, where it's not full contact or anything? She's like, no, I'll kickbox her. I was like, okay, then that's, that's, that's your choice. Well, I know that thing. You can always check out these matches because I've filmed them. You know, and I know the other gentlemen filmed them too. And you can get them over on YouTube on the Parallel North. And you can see what we're talking about and see some of these people that will be back and some that won't. Yeah. Um, another really big, important fight in my mind, um, two or three shows ago we started a 205 tournament for the vacant belt. You know, our original champion said that he didn't want the belt anymore, he's going to move on to bigger things, try to go pro. So he vacated the belt, we had a four-man tournament, and with some bumps in the way because some of the guys in the tournament ended up winning and then going pro, so we had to get a replacement in to fight. We finally got our two finalists. They're coming together. They got some bad blood, you know, some Facebook smack talk going on. And uh, Trevor Alden will be meeting Darius Carter for the 205 belt. Um, Darius is coming up from Flint. Trevor is around that area. And uh, they've had some words back and forth on Facebook. They fought before. Um, Darius got the win the first time. I didn't get to see the fight, but... I'm excited to see how it plays out now. Uh, Trevor's says he's coming to knock him out, and Darius has, you know, got the one win already over him, so he's pretty confident as well. Okay. Now, do you, what do, you do you like the trash talk? Oh, I love the trash. You talk. love the trash. I mean, I, everybody loves point. the trash talk. To a point, you know. Okay. You're gonna say you're gonna knock someone out. You're gonna do this. You're gonna do that. Talk a little shit. That's awesome. You know. You can grab the tickets at um, from Conrad at, at uh, what was it Nico's. Got them at Nico's, um, Matt G and Brad got them here in Boyne City, got some down in Traverse City with Bill Berlin, Angel's going to have them in Mancelona, Harold Hiddle will have them in Bel Air, um, Aaron Ames, my opponent, down in uh, Flint will have some, so they're going to be everywhere. We're going to sell out, we've got a lot right now, but I plan on packing that place. Yeah, and that's at the East Jordan Civic Center, uh, December the 5th. Come on out support local MMA. It sounds like it's going to get regulated out, a little bit thinned out, and it's going to change the whole landscape of what we've been doing for fun and some of these, all these little off the wall uh, events we've been having. You know, something's going to get pretty much tightened right down to. What's your prediction on that? You think it's going to be like two or three people, I'm, or I'm going to say like that promoters. I'm going to say there's. Probably going to drop from like 100 to maybe 10 promotions in the state. Um, I'm going to say probably half the fighters will be done. You know, once you have to pay for it and stuff. I mean, but you said hobbies, they don't really want to. Right, you got to have insurance. Yeah, you know, drug, drug testing for and blood testing for blood obvious hurts. reasons, germs, whatnot. Yeah, uh, there'll be a fight license that you have to have, you know, and... That's going to thin out some of the fighters, so I'm going to take some time and, you know, watch to see who's still here. I'm not closing SFCL. I'm just going to take some time to look at stuff before I continue. Well, there you have it. Conrad, thanks for coming on the program. Um, you. you know, just go out and support um, local entertainment, local MMA, and just come out and have some fun. I mean, it sounds like this is going to be um, kind of the last of the, you know, of the fun for a while until we get it dialed in. Um, I'm Damien Leish, Parallel North. Thanks for tuning in.